we may never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the word of the cross is the power of God to us who have been saved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who chose to manifest the blessed hope of your eternal kingdom by the toil of Saints John de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogues, and their companions, and by the shedding of their blood, graciously grant that through their intercession the faith of Christians may be strengthened day by day. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you once lived following the age of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the desires of our flesh, following the, wish the wishes of the flesh and the impulses, and we were by nature children of wrath like the rest. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for good works, that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. The Lord made us, we belong to him. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. He made us, his we are, his people, the flock he tends. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for he is good. 
the Lord, whose kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbiter? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed. For though one may be rich, one's life d does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, what shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods, and I shall say to myself, Now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for the one who stores up treasure for himself, but is not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. So the key thing behind the man, the rich man's greed in this parable seems to be his delusion about setting up for himself a, a worldly happily ever after. And notice that Jesus, this message, the, his parable and his general, his underlying message is actually seems to be for both. It's both for, I would say it's for the brother who is hogging the inheritance, at least not sharing it, and for the, the brother who wants a piece of the inheritance. It seems like a reasonable expectation. And Jesus seems to be giving them both the same message, which is, in general, do not be live this life in a way that is oriented towards setting up your worldly happily ever after build up for yourselves treasures in heaven because that's the only happily ever after there is and so what we often have what we have in this what we can have in this life is in, in material terms is certainly a certain amount of pleasure for a great period of time you know so you know a lot of people have the you know, just the great dream of just you know setting up for myself that perfect you know, a retirement plan and getting to do all those enjoyable things I want to do. And that is very understandable desire. And I wish it for anybody who can have that because it sounds, it sounds great and everything. Um, I, and I've known people who've gotten to enjoy that sort of thing. And I've seen them and I've seen that period in their life then sunset. And then, so for example, one, one couple I'm thinking of, you know, they really did, they, they were living the dream, they got it. They got the, uh, you know, um, plenty of retirement money and the really nice motor home, I think it was called a Class A, which sort of looks like this big bus, you know. And um, they had, all they had to do was just travel around the country, exploring new places, plenty of, you know, disposable, you know, cash to stop and buy things and just enjoy their, their, their time together, really kind of living for themselves and just living for the day in a really pleasurable way. They were really sort of living the dream. And that, but that only lasted for so, so many years. And then they, they were too old, they couldn't really do that anymore. They had to sell the motor home. Then he passed away. And then she's still there. And she doesn't really have the kind of flip because of her health, because of what she's able to do. She doesn't really, she's not really able to enjoy all that stuff, all that stuff they've saved up, you know. That kind of live in the dream retirement experience, it hit its sunset. And at that point, a lot of things that she had not dealt with in terms of learning how to live richly in this life oriented her life 
toward God, toward loving those around her with love of charity and everything. She didn't, hadn't really spent all that time learning how to grow in all that stuff. And so it, what she had was not really looking like a happily ever after at that point. Versus the person who maybe they don't, they don't get to live that dream I discussed, you know, with the nice motor home and doing all that great stuff and retirement and everything. Some people spend their retirement working, having to work pretty hard. Maybe they have to, they're taking care of grandkids they weren't expecting to be, to, to be taken care of all that time. They don't get to do that kind of plush retirement. And yet, when they're closer to the end, oftentimes they're in a much more plush situation, I'd say, spiritually, because they have been working on growing in their walk with the Lord and building those riches in heaven. And so suddenly, the person with the enviable position suddenly seems very... Who you're thinking of, well, I'd want to be in that person's position, it suddenly looks very different at that point. So it's totally understandable to want to get to live the retirement dream and all that. I would want that if I was going to, if I was a lay person, was looking at retirement and everything. Some of us get it, get it some of us don't. But ultimately, what all of us have access to is the truly everlasting happy ending that comes with building treasure for ourselves in heaven. And so let's all of us try to break out of the delusion of the worldly happily ever after so that we can enjoy the only true happily ever after there is, which is in the next life with our Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, trusting in your divine providence, we now bring forward our petitions. For all of us as Christians, that through the intercession of St. John de Brebeuf and Isaac Jogues and their companions, people who uh, gave their lives in martyrdom, gave up the comforts of this world, and really understood the importance of building up treasures in heaven, that we draw inspiration from them so that we can live our lives in that same spirit in whatever way God wills for us. We pray to the Lord. And for our Archbishop, that he be guided by justice and prudence, we pray to the Lord. For all of our Catholic schools here in Anchorage, that they are able to stay open, we pray to the Lord. For our public officials, especially those kind of shifting in leadership roles here in Anchorage, that they enact policies that respect the importance of the spiritual health of the citizens here in Anchorage, we pray to the Lord. And for the repose of the soul of William Kinder, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we entrust these prayers to your loving care through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his gift, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. As we venerate the passion of your martyrs, St. John de Brebeuf and Isaac Joseph and companions, Grant that through this sacrifice, O Lord, we may proclaim worthily the death of your only begotten Son, who, not content with encouraging the martyrs by word, strengthen them likewise by example, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, St. John de Brebeuf, Isaac Joseph and companions, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow, bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
with St. John de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogue and companions, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Andrew our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant William, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Since I'm the only priest here to distribute communion, I would like to distribute communion to those who would like to receive in the hand first. And then I'll distribute to those who would like to receive on the tongue. So if you'd like to receive on the hand, please form a line right now minding your social distancing. Thank you. 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by the example of blessed John de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogues, and companions, we may bear in our hearts the marks of your son's charity and suffering, and ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.